right. Day. The improved package has arrived. We're having it fitted in time for FP1. Have a look at the factory report. So what is up everybody, welcome once again to my YouTube channel and today we will proceed with our career mode in F1 2016. As you can see we got two improvements in the car, but in downforce and fuel consumption I believe, as we now add into our laptop to see in the left side of our screen that McLaren Honda and Mercedes both got an improvement in fuel consumption and their drag as well. So with that, let's head on to practice. To practice. Welcome to the circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia for the Spanish Grand Prix. Over the next few minutes, the teams will be heading out onto this classic Formula One track for what we're expecting to be a very hectic practice session. So now in our garage, I will uh, just as in every video, I will show you guys my setup if you want to use it for your private career modes. And right now, as we get out of this tablet and go into our uh, practice sec, uh, practice programs menu, you can see we got perfect in two out of three uh, uh, practice programs. Eventually, we get purple in qualifying simulation in practice two, which unfortunately, I, I, unfortunately, I didn't record. I also got that last uh, that last team objective, and as you can see from the weather reports, we might have pre. P3 and also qualifying uh, uh, with some rain presence. So let's move on into the results of practice one, where uh, as you can see we got 17, which is not very good, especially if you look at the times. And our soft time was less than one second uh, quicker than our teammates' uh, best lap uh, on the hard compound. So that we need to work on our pace definitely. As we have a voicemail to listen to from our agent. Hi, guess who? I've seen the team's expectations for the race, so I thought I'd pass them on and wish you luck. Take care. So for the qualifying, we have to qualify 16th or higher and out, uh, outpace our teammate and Julian Palmer as well. As we are now doing the last sector of the Spanish track to set a, a flying lap, we managed to improve, but not enough to improve our position. So we qualify 18th for the Spanish Grand Prix, which I'm not too happy about, and I'm not, I, I'm even more not happy if that makes sense. With our teammate Pascal Verlein qualifying P12, fortunately Esteban Gutierrez will qualify from last position with two illegal blocking penalties. So we will move into uh, P13. But our teammate proceeds to Q2, which is very good for the team, but not very good for us. So in our rivalry update, we still managed to beat our uh, rival Julian Palmer. But in our driver position, even though we are still outperforming, we uh, failed to meet both objectives for the team. Hi, Sema here. Just wanted to let you know what the team are hoping for in the race. So for the race is basically the same thing as qualifying 16 Torayer, beat Pascal Verlein and beat Julian Palmer. So let's get on into the race, shall we? What does the Spanish Grand Prix have in store for us today, I wonder? I hope we see some tight wheel-to-wheel -wheel action down the main straight, circa Mansell and Senna way back in 91, or maybe we'll have a more strategic race here on a track where overtaking can be difficult. It's a sellout crowd of 140,000 here today as we await lights out for the 730-metre sprint down to Turn 1 at this 2.9-mile racetrack. Overtaking is challenging through these 16 corners, but there's still a lot of high-speed excitement to be found, including the flat-out Turn 3 and the terrifying blind right of Turn 9. Anthony Davidson is here with me today. Together we'll be taking you through all the action of this Spanish Grand Prix. It can be hard for the cars to follow each other closely here due to the dirty air coming off the car in front, so perhaps we're looking at a more strategic Grand Prix out. What do you think of that? Hmm, I'm not too sure about that, Crofty. I mean, yes, as you say, it's hard to follow around here, but if you're brave on the brakes, you can get the job done down into Turn 1. 
which is a medium speed corner, so you have to be committed. And looking down at this grid today, I think we're going to see one or two drivers making a move from a long way back. Maybe try to force their opponent into a mistake. I don't think this is a race that's going to be purely decided in the pit stops. Keep your eyes open on the run to turn one and keep it clean. We want to come out in one piece. Good luck. So before we off, let's remind ourselves of yesterday's qualifying session with a look at the starting grid. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he starts from pole position with Sebastian Vettel starting alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid we have Rosberg, Ricardo, Lewis Hamilton and Raikkonen, Bottas, Perez, Massa and Roman Grosjean. Alonso, Button, Daniel Kvyat, and Verlein, Holkenberg, and Amana, Kevin Magnussen, and Carlos Sainz, Ericsson, and Palmer, Felipe Nasser, and Esteban Gutierrez completes the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So, showing you guys my strategy plan for this race, uh, I will underfuel the car as much as possible, as well as go for a soft, medium, medium strategy. So, yeah, not much we can do with our pace, as we have one, two, three, four, five red lights, and they go out, and we are racing in the Spanish Grand Prix, and we have a pretty wild back end, which we manage to control, as we follow our teammate, who had a great start as well, uh, through Button and Kvyat, I believe, he picks the left side of Grosjean, I pick the right side, to a diving move, through the first corner, Massa, a bit too slow for our liking, as we hit the back of him, fortunately, no uh, front wings damaged, but we still lose the position to Alonso, who is also very slow, coming out of turn 3, but we get a move on him either way. Now coming to lap 4, we dive on Perez and get on him as well. As we now get some replace with a very poor start from Gutierrez, as you will be able to see. He nearly gets uh, after the, the Sauber of Nazar, who gets an even poor, poor start uh, than him. And we now following uh, the other Sauber of... Ericsson, as he gets overtaken by Palmer, but he gets a good start compared to Kevin Magnussen, as we now break into turn one, and Magnussen slams right into the back of his teammates. Fortunately, no retirements from that incident, as we now see the onboard camera of our teammate, as he gets a very poor start, uh, going right between the Toro Rosso and the McLaren, and he also almost gets a position on the ass of uh, Roman Groja. But uh, Button defending his place uh, from myself uh, made uh, the, our teammate to go not as fast as he would hope down uh, turn one. So as we are now following the Finnish driver after a really short race, last time, last, last time out in Russia, he gets a really poor position compared to all five cars in front of him. And as we see, he gets actually he gets the move done. On, uh, on Rosberg, but Hamilton also gets second place from Vettel down into turn one. As we are now following Massa, as you can see the, the progress of both manners on the run down to turn one. And he also gets a, a move on the inside of a, uh, a Forcingia of Perez. Yeah, you can see through his helmet, hel helmet that it is the Mexican driver indeed and he gets the move done, so pretty good start from the Brazi Brazilian as well. As we are now going through turn 7 and 8, uh, this very technical chicane, and we go through turn 9, and apparently we get a better run than the Brazilian of the Williams, as we go side by side through the run down into turn 10, and we outbreak him and get another place in the airpin of turn 10, which gets us into 8th place. So fast forwarding, fast forwarding to lap number 6, we, uh, the, cars in, uh, the cars behind us now benefit from the RS. Uh, Perez meanwhile got, on, uh, got, Massa's, uh, got in front of Massa and Perez hits the back of our car down into turn 1. Though in lap 7, as you can see, we are on board with the Brazilian of the Williams, Felipe Massa. 
and is going to do a beautiful move right around the outside of uh, Sergio Perez, who for some reason got very defensively into the with his trajectory, but uh, manages to concede the position to the Brazilian. So uh, right at the end of that lap, we get a really poor run on this straight due to our backhand loss through the last corner, but we still managed to slipstream his car and dive down the inside to get our position right back. Fast forwarding to lap 10, we are now on board with the ass of Roman Groja, and as we witnesses the a scrap between me and Massa, and as we go under breaking into turn one, we can see very beautiful, clean racing, very close, very close quarters, but very clean racing uh, from the Brazilian and myself, as I managed to hold on to my position. And as we come to lap 12, we have a safety car, so no retirement uh, message. So let's see what happened. So apparently it was Richardo after a win last time out in Russia as he goes through the uh, final corner. He goes very slowly and he has a puncture actually on his uh, front right. As you can see going through the curbs on the last corner of that chicane and through the last corner right after the pit entrance which is really unfortunate for the Australian but nevertheless, we took this uh, opportunity to go right into the pits for a, se a set of brand new uh, soft, uh, I'm sorry, medium uh, tire compounds. As you can see, we still managed to get in front of Perez, we, who came into the pits right uh, behind of us. So no positions lost there. Moving to the next lap, we caught up with some people that uh, pitted so we are now catching up with Ericsson and Richardo who just came out of the pits but as you can see midway through that lap Richardo has a very big gap to us which uh, this needs a patch come on Cody's Ericsson is not running at the same pace as Richardo for some reason under the safety car as in the next lap uh, I reckon that everybody who had to make their pit stops already did them. So I'm just giving you a rundown through the uh, grids, if I can say that. Uh, so Jolin Palmer and Marcus Ericsson are both in the top 10. As uh, the German of the Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel, was somewhere in P14, I believe. I didn't quite notice, but uh, for, some, I, for some reason he dropped many positions in that safety car period. As we are now, uh, fortunately, that the, the the cars bunch up all together when uh, the safety car is coming in. So because otherwise we wouldn't have uh, catch up to the safety car queue. And as you can see, the race is going to restart, and off the grid is at least one third of the grid is uh, still running as we get green flags and we get right on the inside of uh, the Sauber of Ericsson into uh, the last chicane but we actually lose a lot of ground into the pair of Red Bull and Renault we are fighting for P8 I believe yeah and as you can see Palmer is actually defending from a Red Bull very nice driving from the rookie uh, Julian Palmer uh, defending massively from uh, the Red Bull of Richardo as we fast forward a couple of turns into turns uh, 7 and 8 I believe Richardo tries to move on the inside of 7 which, uh, which turns into the outside of 8 and we get the opportunity to pass him right on the inside of turn 9 which uh, the Toro Rosso of Kvyat, I believe, also does the same. As we are down into turn 10, we try a move on the outside of Jolin Palmer. We left the inside in turns 11, but the outside on 12. So we finally get the move done on uh, turn 12. But now it is Kvyat going on the inside for turn 13. And Richardo also loses another position to the Force India of Nico Hulkenberg as he approached uh, uh, corner 13 as well 
So the Red Bull of Ricciardo with uh, serious problems in his car uh, after a great performance, he was in uh, second place before his puncture. So something must have happened uh, very serious to his car as we got uh, attacked by Kvyat into turn 10, but we managed to defend it. But if you look on the minimap, it's a car stopped off just in button and yellow flags on that corner. So let's just see the replay of what happened. So it is Richard going very slowly and Nasser just sideswipes Jason Button and sends him right into the wall as we see the Britain's perspective that Force India going very slow as well for some reason and Nasser oh, avoiding the Force India smack, smack, eh, I'm sorry, smacked right into the side of that McLaren and sent him right into the wall and it's race over for Jason Button. As we are now almost three wide going into turn one and it is a first India of Wolkenberg. He spun. He spun out. Apparently, I touched him as we are now getting a closer look at the incident. As uh, Felipe Massa is going to overtake the Renault of Julian Palmer. And as we slow down the footage, we can see that uh, the Toro Rosso didn't give us much room either. So I thought, uh, I sincerely thought that I got uh, enough space for the Force India to get through the corner safely, but now through this angle, uh, clearly we didn't. And we unfortunately hit the right front, uh, the, the left front tire of his car and send him spinning. As we are now fast forwarding, fast forwarding into lap 31, 21, and Kvyat uh, tries an overtake on us, which we get right back on him. Is locking up the inside uh, front wheel. As now Massa right on the outside of turn uh, three gets uh, a place also on the Russian. As we are now fast forward a couple of laps, as we see Carlos Sainz uh, charging on his teammate, but Felipe Massa with a big slipstream effect going on the inside of both cars and actually gets the overtake on both of the Toro Rosso's down into turn one. Now in lap 24, as we try to put the power down as gently as possible through the last corner of this track, but still Massa has a better pace than our car and gets on us as Carlos Sainz tries to do the same. We outbreak Sainz, but we also Back, uh, it's the back of Massa's car and that nullifies any chances of us getting back on the Williams driver. As we lose uh, sight of Felipe Massa and at down the straight on lap 21, we are now in quite of a Tor Rosso sandwich coming into turn one as we get hit by Sainz and Kvyat and we are basically getting pinballed, pinballed on uh, uh, through turns one and two. And we also cannot get the inside line of Kvyat as he goes very defensively through turn three. As you now see the perspective of Nico Olkenberg as he sees that table tennis action, which is quite interesting for both the Toro Rosso drivers. As we now head into lap 30, and as you can see, we are struggling very hard on our tires, on our traction through the last corner, which gives us a very poor run into the straight. As we now have a Force India on our left and a Toro also on our right. And we uh, lose the position to both of them. But now in turn two and three, we are side by side with the Spaniard, Carlos Sainz. And into turn four, uh, we also stick on the outside of him very closely indeed, very close raci racing, but now we have the inside line for turn 5 where we get the move done right back on our, uh, in the front of the Spaniard. Now in lap 32, as you can see, our teammate Verline just flying through the middle of me and Sainz as I get the inside line and push our teammate. And as you can see, it turns into only a set of tires 
for some reason because we could see the car of uh, Bottas or Massa. I think it was a Williams behind us. But uh, for some reason we could see the car behind Verline, but not Verline. So quite funny, I think, as we missed the corner, the breaking zone for turn four, and Sainz gets uh, through the inside of us. But we now adding into the uh, corner seven and eight chicken. We we lose the position for uh, to Sainz, and now we make a mess right out of turn nine, which gives us a very poor run. Uh, even though we have DRS, but now we miss completely our breaking zone for turn 10 and almost lose the position not only to Verline but also to Groja. But we get right back on him as he gets right back on us in lap 34. And we actually don't have the space to try to dive right on the outside of him. And as we are trying to push very hard to get back on him, we dip a tire onto Marble Land, probably. <laughs> Marble City on that point of the race. And we lose the back end and we go straight into the wall. Fortunately, no harm done. But we don't have much catch up to do. As you can see, that trail of smoke coming from the back of Roman Grosjean's car, who just parks the car in the runoff area of the chicane which unfortunately for, for us didn't bring any sort of safety car into the race which will be very much appreciated uh, from us as we are now in lap 36 we get a tap from behind from Ericsson's uh, car and he actually gets a move on our inside a very dirty move if I can say so but it worked and he probably didn't get any penalty for it but still, we have to take it. And as we can see, we pretty much ruin, ruined this set of uh, medium tires. So at the end of lap 39, we dive into the pits for a brand new set of medium tires. I I gave uh, one or two set, uh, seconds to considerate a switch into the soft tires but then uh, our pace was dropping off really hard so I couldn't go on any further with the old set of medium tires so we had to dive into the pits and hope that these medium tires uh, have a better effect on our pace uh, yeah as we get out uh, into the track ahead of Ricciardo who is on uh, hard tires who is making his uh, uh, way through the field after, uh, so his uh, problems might be uh, fixed as he got uh, some positions after being in P19 at some point. As we are now trying to get out of the way of Kimi Raikkonen who is in uh, P5 or 6. But we go too wide and also we don't want to concede the place to recharge you because they are racing him and lose the back end quite as we, uh, in the same fashion as we did when we were uh, chasing Groja but this time we hit uh, Ricciardo and use it to get right back on the Australian as right in the next lap he tries to go uh, for a move on the inside of turn 10 I think I gave him enough room but unfortunately I still give him a little tap on his right front but we get to defend uh, from uh, the, the Red Bull. But he will have the RS come uh, into the main straight. So let's see if we are able to defend from him. As it is a Renault power unit versus a Mercedes power unit. And he might still have some problems. Even though he got some places back, he might still have some problems. And we managed to defend from him down into the inside of turn one. As you can see in our mirrors, we have now a Force India closing on uh, Ricciardo's gearbox. As we have now some blue flags, as you can see in the minimap, the blue flags were not shown to us, but uh, probably to Ricciardo, who is now losing the position to Perez. And as you can see on the minimap, they lost quite a bit of ground uh, for us to, for some reason. 
Nevertheless, Gutierrez is the one managing to get uh, through all of that scrap and actually does an overtaking maneuver on us, which we try to get right back on him, but lose the back end coming out of turn one. And uh, he gets uh, the position on us as we make a mess out of turn nine in the 57th lap. And we actually get stuck on the side pod of Magnussen. We have to make our car spin a little bit in order to get our car free from him. And he lost a little bit of ground, but it is it, he is still in the RS territory. So let's see how it goes when we arrive the main straight. I hope to get a good exit out of this corner which apparently we got a very uh, standard one as we now move to the outside to the outside of the of the racing line to avoid any slipstream effects from that Renault and once again just like we did to Ricardo we got the place uh, defended on the inside of turn 1 Now, fast forwarding, fast forwarding to lap 58, this time we don't tangle with uh, the Danish driver as uh, we move into the inside of turn 10, but unfortunately we lose the back end there, which is a, a very uh, uh, a point on the track, which if you are not careful, that is exactly what happens. Though in the last chicane, we actually get our nose on Magnus and just enough for him to compromise the run into the last corner and we not only make the move on him we also get the RS which proves crucial even though in lap 60 we have to get out of the way of Hamilton's car and as I am expecting him to be much faster through that corner but it wasn't so he eats our side pod and we lose the position to Kevin Magnussen as we uh, were so mad that we just sl slammed into the inside of him to get uh, uh, our position back essentially fortunate to not get any sorts of penalties there as we go through to the end of that lap out of uh, into the main straight and this time out we get touched by uh, Magnussen but we still have the space to do a diving move on the inside of turn one as we did many times already and he also moves out of the way of Felipe Massa which he led through much later into the lap but we now have blue flags as we lose the back end out of the last corner and Magnussen gets an, over an easy overtake on us but he slows down for some reason to uh, let uh, signs uh, get by but that uh, allowed me to get right the position back which proves crucial for our finishing position as uh, we finish P16 as Lewis Hamilton I believe uh, got uh, the win a great win then for the Mercedes team today Anthony what do you think made the difference here? It was a question of right place, right time today. We were looking at an entirely different race before the safety car came out, but they were able to take full advantage after the field had been bumped up. So as I say that, we can see the drivers coming out now to collect their trophies. It's yet more silverware to take back to their base in Brackley after another excellent Grand Prix. So, yeah, just uh, want to say that I feel like I got the most out of uh, the car in that race. Uh, just our pace was not too good. Our setup did not fit us for some reason. I tried many setups, but couldn't get any better results. So we still achieved uh, most of our team's uh, objectives. So we still are in an overachieving position in our team. 
But uh, yeah, we just have to move on and hope uh, for better things in the next uh, Grand Prix, which will be in Monaco. Always a great track. One of my top five tracks for sure, as I think I'm going with a fuel efficiency upgrade, which can help us around Monaco very much if we can use a lighter uh, car due to a lower uh, fuel consumption, which will help us very much, especially if it rains. So let's get into Monaco for the next video. See you guys there.